To St Thomas's Church Trowbridge online. If you're part of one of our regular congregations it's good to be together again. If you've discovered us over lockdown we're so glad you've joined our community. If this is your first time with us it's good to have you with us today. We are part of a family of churches St Thomas's Church Trowbridge Kingfisher Church on Paxcroft Mead, St John's West Ashton and Holy Trinity, the Church on the Roundabout. You can find out more about us, including contact details on our church website, St Thomas's Church Trowbridge. And of course, you have already discovered something of our online presence on YouTube. In difficult times, the church continues to meet. 
It's good to be together. Welcome. In the name of Christ, who died and was raised by the glory of the Father, welcome. Grace, mercy and peace be with you all. Let us return to the Lord our God and say to him, Father, we have sinned against heaven and against you. We are not worthy to be called your children. We turn to you again. Have mercy on us. Bring us back to yourself as those who once were dead, but now have life through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God, who sent his Son into the world to save sinners, bring us his pardon and peace, now and forever. Amen. And the Collect, today's special prayer. Lord God, your Son left the riches of heaven and became poor for our sake. When we prosper, save us from pride. When we are needy, save us from despair. That we may trust in you alone, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our theme for today is a picnic with a difference. And in a little while, Jane will be reading to us from John's Gospel. And after that, Philip will be leading our prayers of concern, our prayers of intercession. But first, we're going to worship God. Do 
not faint, you won't grow weary. You're the defender of the weak. You comfort those in need. You lift us up on wings like eagles. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait. Upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord.
The reading this morning is taken from John chapter 6, verses 1 to 15. Jesus feeds the 5,000. Sometime after this, Jesus crossed to the far shore of the Sea of Galilee, that is the Sea of Tiberias, and a great crowd of people followed him because they saw the signs he had performed by healing the sick. Then Jesus went up on a mountainside and sat down with his disciples. The Jewish Passover festival was near. When Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming towards him, he said to Philip, where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? He asked this only to test him, for he had already had in mind what he was going to do. Philip answered him, it would take more than half a year's wages to buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. Another of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. Here is a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish. But how far will they go among so many? Jesus said, have the people sit down. There was plenty of grass in that place and they sat down. About 5,000 men were there. Jesus then took the loaves, gave thanks and distributed to those who were seated as much as they wanted. He did the same with the fish. When they had all had enough to eat, he said to his disciples, gather the pieces that are left over, let nothing be wasted. So they gathered them and filled 12 baskets with the pieces of the five barley loaves left over by those who had eaten. After the people saw the sign Jesus performed, they began to say, surely this is the prophet who has come into the world? Jesus, knowing that they intended to come and make him king by force, withdrew again to the mountain by himself. Before we begin our intercessions, let us first have a time of thanksgiving. As we reflect on recent months, we thank you, Lord, for those who work on the land and produce our food, for those who work in factories, processing and packing our food, for those working in retail and keeping the shelves stacked. We thank you for those who have manned food banks, who have delivered food to those who are housebound and kept in touch with the lonely. We thank you, Lord, for doctors, nurses, GP surgeries and care workers who have worked so sacrificially over the past few months to keep us healthy. We thank you for teachers who have been seeking to educate our young people in difficult circumstances. We thank you for those who have emptied our dustbins and have taken away our recycling. And we thank you for clergy and others who have fed us spiritually while we have been unable to meet together. We ask, Lord, that you will give us grateful hearts. Amen. As we turn now to our intercessions, we pray for our world with all its many problems, both to do with the current pandemic, but also as many nations face natural disasters and the consequences of war and famine. We ask that political leaders in all countries might make the welfare of their populations a first priority, setting aside all personal and national ambitions. And we pray in particular for our own nation. We pray for our Queen and other members of the Royal Family, that you will keep them safe from all harm. We pray for the Prime Minister and members of the government as they daily make hard and difficult decisions, some of which are unpopular, not just to do with COVID-19, but also Brexit, the NHS, the economy, and many other issues. We pray for local government as they seek to implement much of the emergency legislation. We pray for those who have been adversely affected by the current pandemic, those who have lost their jobs, those whose incomes have shrunk significantly, those who are finding working at home difficult, 
and those who face an uncertain future. We pray, Heavenly Father, for those who have been bereaved during these recent months, that you will give them your peace and comfort. We pray for those who are unwell, whether in mind or body, and for those who face difficult domestic and family circumstances. Keep us mindful of their needs and keep us faithful in prayer. We pray for the church, both nationally and locally, as we seek ways of maintaining the fellowship and teaching of believers, both in buildings and through the use of technology, and as we endeavour to reach out to the community in a sharing of the good news of Jesus and in meeting practical needs. We ask for your guidance here in this parish as we consider the future, how we might continue to fulfil our mission in a changed and changing situation. Lord, we ask all these things in the name and for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. As we draw our intercessions to a close, let us join together in saying the Lord's Prayer using the contemporary version. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. Thank you to Jane for our reading and to Philip for our prayers. Our theme today is a picnic with a difference. Well, as restrictions have eased after lockdown, many of us have been getting out into the countryside. And as we have done so, the opportunities for enjoying a summer picnic have increased. I like picnics. Sitting on the grass, or maybe a picnic table, out in the fresh air, enjoying some sandwiches, maybe a scotch egg, a packet of crisps, maybe a Kit Kat or two, with the sun on your back. Well, sometimes the sun. Although this year, there have been quite a few sunny days. However, I remember many years ago, we hosted a school student on a European exchange and we decided we wanted to show them Avebury and its remarkable stones. But on the way there, the sky darkened and it started to rain. What to do? Undeterred, we sat on a picnic bench with our raincoats on and munched our sandwiches in the rain. I wondered what our visitor made of this bizarre British tradition. Today, our reading is about a picnic, but it was a picnic with a difference. A meal in the open air was transformed by Jesus, and we can learn a lot from that extraordinary experience. The background to what occurred is that Jesus and his followers had crossed the Great Lake, known as the Sea of Galilee. Jesus based a lot of his ministry on the fishing village of Capernaum, on the western side of the lake. But this event occurred on the eastern shore. He was followed by a huge crowd of people. Now, this posed a bit of a logistical problem. Here was a large group of people, away from the main urban centres, and what were they going to eat? It was then that Jesus asked Philip, a rather challenging question. Where should we get enough food for this crowd? Philip was understandably rather phased. He replied, it would take more than half a year's wages to buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. 
In the original Greek, he had done a quick bit of mental arithmetic, not my strong point, and calculated it would cost 200 denarii. The denarius was the standard Roman silver coin of the time. Not surprisingly, he wasn't carrying that much cash. John tells us that he, Jesus, asked this only to test him, for he already had in mind what he was going to do. When I was a full-time school teacher, I would ask questions of my students after we had been studying a topic together. When did Henry VIII dissolve the monasteries? Why did the Wall Street crash cause the Great Depression? How was the Cuban Missiles Crisis resolved? One of my habits was to wander around the classroom asking different students. I knew the answers, but I was checking if my students had been listening, were getting the big picture as well as the details. I was also checking to see if they were awake. So they became partners in the learning and involved in the lesson. Sometimes involuntary partners, but partners nevertheless. God sometimes challenges us with a question. Not to trip us up or expose our inadequacies, but to get us to think things through, to get in tune with him, to reflect on our relationship with him, to make us step out beside him. And he sometimes allows things to happen that we find difficult. That is not the same as God causing these problems, nor does it imply that God approves of a particular situation. But when we find ourselves in a challenging situation, he calls us to look to him for the right understanding. Jesus asked Philip because he wanted Philip to think about the options and the possibilities. So, when you next face a difficult issue or question, don't consider it an obstacle dropped in your path by God. Instead, see it as a time to engage with God about the options and possibilities. Another disciple, Andrew, starts the process. He looks about him, weighs up the situation and offers the thought that here is a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fishes. Five small barley loaves and two small fishes. But how far will they go among so many? The problem here is that Andrew sees something of the situation, but not the possibilities. There are some resources, but they're not impressive. This was a poor kid's breakfast. The Greek word opsaria means dried or pickled fish. And there were only two of them. This was not a fish supper. And as for barley loaves, this was far from desirable. In the Roman military, it was a punishment to be put on barley rations. Bread made from barley was considered coarse and poor. Wheat bread was considered most desirable. This is definitely a value lunch, not top notch food. And from a kid. All too often, society in the past, and sometimes today, fails to take children seriously. I remember one of our children indignantly showing me the bus ticket they had purchased that day. It read, one child or one dog. Don't underestimate the worth of children, their insights or the offering to God that comes from their lives and presence. But to go back to Andrew, 
he was not impressed by the raw materials to hand. And sometimes we can feel like that. We can feel we have little to offer God, his church, our communities. We can feel that our gifts and skills are so limited, flawed, inadequate. However, such an assessment fails to take into account the Jesus factor. We are told that Jesus then took the loaves, gave thanks and distributed to those who were seated as much as they wanted. Given to God, all is transformed. Jesus thanks his father for the resources available. Then, empowered by Jesus, the ordinary becomes extraordinary. The power of Father God is in Jesus and changes the situation. We see the limitations of a situation or person, but God sees the possibilities. Recognising that is transformative as we look at the challenges around us. This does not always cause problems to go away. Challenges and difficulties may remain. But now we are looking at how God can use them instead of asking, why this? Why me? We begin asking, what now? How can God use this? That is radical thinking. And so everyone is fed. And when they had all had enough to eat, he, Jesus, said to his disciples, gather the pieces that are left over. Let nothing be wasted. They gather enough to fill 12 baskets. Here we see a wonderful recycling and care for resources that speaks very strongly to our present situation of climate emergency and the need to take better care of natural resources. Care for God's creation is rooted in our biblical responsibility to be stewards, not exploiters of the world in which we live. But there is an even deeper meaning too. What we give to God and he uses is precious to him. So do not denigrate what you are doing for God. God doesn't, so we mustn't. And the desire that none be lost is true of God's view of people too. Earlier in the Gospel, we are told that God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. John 3.16 God's love is for all. It requires a response, but it is for all. Our love must be as all-encompassing too. Then the occasion ends with a potential conflict. The onlookers declare, surely this is the prophet who is to come into the world. Jesus, knowing that they intended to come and make him king by force, withdrew. The food miracle performed by Jesus reveals the power of God. Many of those present then decide to try to make him their political leader. They clearly read him as a particular kind of Messiah. One to satisfy their physical needs and, we may guess, bring about a national uprising against Rome. But these people have underestimated him. Jesus is more than a prophet. He is unprecedented. Furthermore, those people wanting a military leader thought that they could impose their agenda on him. Now, there is no doubt that the gospel impacts on politics. But Jesus does so on his own terms. And the kingdom of God is not going to be imposed by force 
or by rebellion against Rome. Jesus sets the agenda, not the crowd. We are left with much to reflect on. This was certainly a picnic with a difference. Let us affirm our faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing. Taking the form of a slave, he was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God has raised him on high and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Come set your own and way in the world once again. In grace and mercy, I bear the world away. Come set the voice and praise with all that world for in the banisters. Holy Spirit, come invade us now. Thank you to Beth, Lydia, 
Rob, Carrie and the Heard family for leading our worship this morning. We hope that you have a good week and if you're getting away for a bit of holiday, we wish you safe journeying. God bless us all. Let us bless each other in the words of the grace. Words that unite Christians across time and place. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.